With David Cameron giving a major speech on Scotland this week, the debate on independence is heating up ahead of the vote in September. But what does it mean to be Scottish? Stuart Cosgrove tries to find out. OK, so you're passionate about your national identity. Enough to have electromagnetic needles inject indelible ink under your skin? I've got the Scottish flag tattooed on my skin. It's inked in me. I'm Stuart Cosgrove and in the year of the referendum, I've been watching the carnival of Scottish life more closely than ever before. And meeting people with surprising perspectives on what it means to be Scottish. We regard it as an old Scottish tradition which we're reviving. It's a place where identity is neither simple nor fixed. Many people feel only Scottish, some feel British, and a substantial number look elsewhere for their identity. I live in Scotland, so I'm a Scot, but I'm, I am British. These weighty books contain the hidden history of millions of Scots, ordinary people whose lives defy simple classification. I'm a new register house surrounded by the birth, death and marriage certificates of Scotland. This is the raw data of the nation. But what does it mean to be Scottish? All of us will answer that question differently, some in clichés and some in compelling human stories. Trust me, there are five million ways to be Scottish. You're tuned to Off The Ball, the most petty and ill-informed sports programme on radio. Welcome to the show, I'm Stuart Cosgrove, he's Tam Cowan, and joining us soon will be our guests, Mark Vota and Dundee Barry. You're I'm Stuart Cosgrove, I present a radio show. I am variously a soul music fan, a St Johnson supporter, I'm married into a Tamil Hindu family, and I've struggled with eczema all of my life. To this day, cruel friends call me liar. Final itchy. Oh, and I'm Scottish, whatever that means. I feel very secure about my identity in all its mongrel glory. And the referendum is exciting. It offers us an opportunity to reflect on how Scotland's governed. But worry not, this is neither a political film nor a campaign video. In fact, it's a journey to meet many people across Scotland with both settled and shifting attitudes to their identity and how it might impact on the referendum. Ninety-minute patriots. That's a commonly held view of Scots, aligning us uncomfortably with simple emotions and a game of football. We're coming, we're coming, we're going on the road. I think of the Titan Army. I think of Haggis. We're coming, we're coming down the road. The Scotland international team, the Edinburgh Tattoo. We'll be coming. <laughs> so, a pudding and a song about coming down a road. Surely identity is more complex than that. Edinburgh, the capital, the Athens of the north. Home of miraculous myths and of a man who's lived with the raw data of identity for the last 20 years. David McCrone runs a centre which focuses on the study of national identity. He spent a lifetime gathering evidence about how we see ourselves. David, this thing called identity, mm -hmm. is it important? Well, it is, but it's quite difficult to pin it down. Uh, the, the, the writer, Willie McIlvanny, once said that national identity is a bit like having an insurance policy. You know you've got one, but you don't know where it is, and you certainly don't know what the small print means. So it's, it's everywhere, it's ubiquitous, but in a way, until it's problem problematic, whether there's a situation where people have to choose, people just take it for granted. In everyday life, we do take it for granted, but decades of evidence shows that Scots, more than anyone else in Britain, feel their national identity. In the language of marketing speak, it's a core value. 
over the years, we discovered that Scottish identity, being Scottish uh, among everyone, is a very, very important identity on a par, thank God, with being a parent and indeed being a partner or a spouse, and certainly more important than people's gender or their class identity and so on. So it is ubiquitous in Scotland. People in Scotland think of themselves overwhelmingly as Scottish. Some people would say that identity is, is, is kind of fixed, it's given, you know, mm. I am Scottish, therefore I am. Is identity fixed? No, because identity, above all, has to do with claims. Uh, that is, people claim to be something, uh, that is, I am this, I am that, or they say, you, you are not, or you are one of us, or not one of us, and so on. So there's a whole complex of, of negotiation of identities uh, which people go through. Identity matters, and for some people, it runs more than skin deep. On the walls of this tattoo parlour in Hamilton are the diverse slogans, emblems and symbols of identity. Lanarkshire has its own subcultures of belonging, which often find their expression in politics and religion. In the, the Catholic side of things, you've got Jesus, the Virgin Mary, crosses, crosses with Jesus, all that sort of thing. And you've got more radical things like IRA tattoos and that sort of thing. And the Prussian side of things, you've got Union Jacks, um, British tattoos like uh, bulldogs, lions, all that sort of thing. And then more radical, you get UVF and UDA. Although I'm more interested in how Scotland will be governed after the referendum, to two parlours tell us that the event itself is igniting passions and tribal loyalties. Uh, getting a tattoo just to symbolise my feeling on uh, my Britishness, uh, obviously just to, to reaffirm my, my position on the referendum. Most of my tattoos are all something very close to me. A majority of them are obviously cultural aspects of my life. Uh, and it's all, always has been the way that any tattoo I've got always has been more cultural than it has, and personal than anything else. So this is the body politics of the yes-no debate and in the time-honoured BBC tradition, here's Tony to provide balance. I'm getting a salt tire with freedom, with thistles. And what does that tattoo say to you? Tell me some of the things that... I'm Scottish. Now tell me, you've got one very special tattoo. Tell me about that. Eh, uh, 100% Scottish beef. This is it's on my bum. I will show you, but I don't think you want to see it. A desire to adorn ourselves with image and identity is what keeps this business alive, and the final results are never easy to erase. I like the fact that obviously it's, it emphasises on on the flag itself, which was a, what I was originally going for, obviously. So uh, I'm definitely, definitely happy with that. It's probably the biggest one I've got, I'd say. <laughs> Feel more Scottish. Now I've got the Scottish flag tattooed on my skin. It's inked in me. Forever? For, till I die. Tattoos divide opinion just as much as politics, but they also act as a form of cartoon identity, values inked into abs. Absolutes. The forthcoming referendum engages viewpoints that are certain and absolute, but many more that are unsure and whose views are open to change. To help me grasp this capacity to change, I met Scotland's biggest cephalogical brain to try and work out what identity means in cold, hard political reality. If it wasn't the case that Scotland was indeed a distinct nation within the United Kingdom and that therefore as a result some people could say to themselves, well look, I am Scottish, um, why can't my country be uh, an independent state like any other nation? I don't think we'd be having this referendum in the first place. And certainly it's clearly true that the more Scottish that people feel and the less British that they feel, uh, the more likely they are going to, they say that they are going to vote yes in this referendum. At the backdrop of all of this, identity is providing a crucial structure that is shaping the opportunities that are open to the yes and no side in the first place. In other elections, uh, John, there's been a tendency for 
for analysts to look to particular subgroups of the society. We in the USA elections, it was the soccer mom. We've had in British elections, you know, Basildon man or white van man or whatever. Is it possible to identify within the Scottish electorate subgroups of people that may be disproportionately important? Well, I'm not sure whether we can identify groups that are disproportionately important, though I think we can identify stereotypes. I mean, I think on the yes side, at least, almost undoubtedly, as it were, the stereotype is going to be what we might call caber man. Now, what, in other words, somebody who is relatively young, who is male, and who has a very strong sense of Scottish identity, as, for example, expressed through participation in tossing the caber in a Highland Games. That sounds about 25 people. <laughs> um, well, I mean, therein may be, in fact, reveals the fact that, of course, at the end of the day, we are looking at a society, yeah. many of whom are people with a sense of dual identity, which is why, arguably, you know, this referendum is not looking that easy for the other side to win, because even somebody with a very strong sense of Scottish identity, many of those people will also acknowledge a sense of Britishness. Oh, come on, John. I've lived in Scotland most of my life, but I have never met or even seen a caber man. It sounds like a term thrown into the debate by sophologists to sell their wares or to baffle us into submission. But John has a point. Feeling Scottish doesn't stop you feeling other things as well. Sad as it may seem, I recently reread an old copy of the Journal of Scottish Affairs from 1994, and I came across a perspective on the past that may provide a key to unlocking the mysteries of today. It's a methodology which breaks our sense of identity down into a series of concentric rings, family, nationality, tribe, and so on. The original author of the concentric circles of identity lives here, in Fife. T.C. Smout is retired, but he was the historiographer royal and remains an avid ornithologist. Like me, he thinks identity is complex and layered. These are like circles that, are, that spread out from the family to the tribe. And the kin is very important in Scotland, which is kind of between the family and the tribe. And um, the region, and then the nation, the nationality of being Scottish, and then something possibly even bigger, like being European. I mean, it's what you wake up in the morning, you say, who am I? And the answer to that is quite a lot of things. According to Professor Smout's theories, these concentric circles have a distinct Scottish aspect. Being Scottish, historically, is not a fixed tribal or, or ethnic identity, nor is it based on a language or creed. It's more than just living here, it's actually putting down roots. It's the feeling of belonging which makes you Scottish. But it's not who your mother and father were.